Hey there, I have a visual explanation for the Pythagorean theorem. You're probably familiar with a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we are going to do a demonstration that Pythagoras himself did in the 6th century BC. So we're reading this book called String, Straight Edge, and Shadow by Julia Diggins, and this is a chapter that explains how to do this demonstration. So you're going to need a ruler, a compass, pencil, and some paper. And I prefer to use this drawing paper because it's a little bit heavier than uh, copy paper. So we could just cut down this sheet of paper which is 9 inches by 12 inches and form a square by measuring off 9 inches on this side and 9 inches at the top then drawing a line from top to bottom and then we could cut it out and that way we would have a square because we already have the corners at 90 degrees. But suppose you didn't have a piece of paper that had square corners, or you were working on a piece of parchment or in the sand, the way that Pythagoras was probably doing. Um, you would need to construct a square before you could prove that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I am drawing the largest circle that I can, placing my pointer now at the circumference of the circle and making arcs that intersect the outside of the circle. Then I will place the pointer at the point that intersects the circle and I will continue doing this all the way around the circle until I have made six equal distant marks all the way around the circle. And I'm just in this last one I'm just double checking that it was indeed like equal distance from um, the beginning point all the way to the end point. Okay so now we want to take any two of the points that are next to each other and connect them with a ruler to make a straight line. And you want to be as precise as you can for this. Then on the opposite side we're going to do the same thing and we're going to connect two adjacent points. And now we're going to connect those together to form a rectangle and they form 90 degree angles in those corners. Now my compass is still set at the radius of the circle and which is the side of the square and I want to get the other sides of the square. So I just placed my compass at the corner and then I swung the compass around so that it would intersect the line that created the rectangle so that I would know where to create my square. I know this sounds confusing but I hope visually it makes a little bit more sense. And then I can connect those two intersecting lines to form a square. So one side of this is a square, the other side is a rectangle. Okay so all this was just to construct our square and if you'd like to see a different method for constructing a square, you can click the box in the upper left side of the screen. So now we want to construct a smaller square within this square, so I'm reducing the size of my compass so that I can position it in the corner and draw an arc that intersects each of those lines, and that way I can construct my smaller square. And so now I'm going to position my compass on one of the lines, one of the arcs that cross the line, and now I'm going to make an arc out in the center of the page, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and make another arc, and where the lines cross is going to be the corner of my square. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect this point to the side of the square, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I felt like I had drawn this a little bit off and so I'm just going to uh, double check that my arc was in the right place and I'm going to draw that arc then come back to the other side and draw it again and where those two arcs intersect is the point that I want to draw the corner of my square at. And so now I'm just going to take my ruler again and I'm going to draw that line and then I'm going to reposition the ruler again and then draw the last side of that box. And now I want to extend those two lines all the way up, up and then all the way to the left. And so I'm going to take my compass again and position it 
at the edge of that large box so that I can draw my intersecting arc along that line. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And you want to make sure that your compass doesn't shift sizes while you're doing this project. And so now I can connect both of those lines, or rather both those dots, to create that line. And then again, I can do it on this side. So anything that's not totally accurate is human error and not mathematical error. So the next part of this project is to construct triangles within the rectangle. So I'm going to draw diagonal lines from one corner to the other in each of these rectangles and we will have created right triangles in which the short side of the triangle is next to the small square and the long side of the triangle is next to the large square and now we just need to um, prove that the square, which is part of the hypotenuse, equals a squared plus b squared. So I thought that looking at it uh, as a picture might be a little bit easier, as well as labeling up these different parts so that we could have a better understanding of what we just made. So we have the upper small square as a squared and the larger square at the bottom as b squared. We have our two triangles in each of those rectangles that we have constructed to show that the a side of the triangle is next to a squared and the b side of the triangle which would be the shorter or rather the longer side but not the hypotenuse is next to b squared. And so we want to show that a squared plus b squared equals c squared by showing that the hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse, is actually a squared plus b squared. Okay. So the way we're going to do this is by cutting this all out and reassembling it. So I would suggest that you first cut just the square out. You don't need that rectangle on the far side. We just had that in order to construct our square. So we're going to cut this out, but you also need to cut out another one since we're going to be cutting up the one with the squares and the rectangle. and We want to reassemble it onto the exact same size square. So you're going to end up with all these pieces here. You have this square here, the rectangle, the small square, and this other rectangle. And remember the rectangles have the triangles in them. And now we want to cut those triangles out and then reposition them within the square. And I think once it all comes together it will make a lot of sense. And if you do this project also you'll find it really fascinating and very instructional. So now we want to reposition everything and we're taking those triangles and we're going to put them on the outside edge of this square, which remember they came from this square to begin with, right? So now we have this space in the middle, which is a square, which is the hypotenuse side of the triangle squared, which equals a squared plus b squared, because if we, um, well first I'm going to show you how b squared and a squared look and the hypotenuse squared. And now we're going to reassemble it again to prove that c squared is indeed a squared plus b squared which is those two squares. Okay and now let's um, shift it around one more time and reposition those triangles around the outside edge. And in case you're wondering why there are four triangles, we just want to make sure that we're covering the same area within that, that square in the background. So there we have it, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
So I realize that this is probably a little bit complicated if you're new to the Pythagorean theorem. And even if you've known about it before, seeing it visually this way with the areas could also be a little bit confusing. So if you are still confused, please leave a question in the comment section of this video if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you still find it a little bit confusing, I would recommend that you actually try this project out because my kids and I were totally fascinated by this project. And it was once we actually did it, my kids could really see how a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if you want to see how we put together our unit study for math, you can click the right side of the screen. And if you would like to see a very short, simple demonstration on the interior angles of a triangle, you can click the left side of the screen. And if you're on a mobile device, I will add the links to those videos in the description below. And as always, you can check out my website at pepperandpine.com. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.